Hey there, this is Jeff Ashley, creator of Frontiers and reluctant host of Back Tears, the Frontiers after show. What you're about to hear should never happen, and that is forcing a writer to talk to anybody. But here we are. So as you're listening, remember, this is my first time doing an interview like this, and I did the best I could for you. So enjoy reveling in the awkwardness and know that John DeLancey is the king of good sports. Thanks for listening and enjoy. Oh, and don't forget to check us out at Frontiers.tv. One, two, three, one, two, three. Are we good? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hey, this is Jeff Ashley, and we're climbing into your ears with Back Tears, the Frontiers after show, which isn't just an after show, it's an after party. Though admittedly, it does sound a little like an off-brand burn ointment. This guest we have today is probably someone you know from his role as Officer Number One on the 1979 episode Experiment in Terra, which I'm pretty sure is a pun, of the original Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> you may also know him as Donald Margolis, a father whose grief causes quite an air traffic kerfuffle on Breaking Bad. And some of you might have run across his more obscure work playing a character called Q in something called Star Trek, I believe? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> as distinct a voice as you'll find this side of Gilbert Gottfried, I am so excited to have him here and have him as our narrator, John DeLancey. Welcome and thank you. Very much. Thank you. <laughs> do you remember that Bellstar Galactica? I do. I do. I I was under contract with Universal, and they called me up in the morning, and they said uh, we have a job for you, and it's at the end of the day. And uh, it was this big speech, and I went, oh, my God, I have to learn all this? And I got into a car and drove endlessly to out into the desert where there were, I mean, it was like, I've never, you know, I, I didn't grow up here, so this was all really unusual. Out into the desert, and um, uh, they put me in this uh, silly helmet, and then I stood there uh, with two you know, between two cliffs at night, and they said action, and I looked like a thousand people were running towards me with helicopters, <laughs> and I had to, you know, bark out these lines, which I barely knew. <laughs> it was terrifying. I've been watching the uh, the reruns, and I love I loved the new Galactica. My, uh, the old one's fun, too, but I'm watching one night, and I don't think the camera ever got closer than about 30 feet to you. And you were, you were wearing like this giant motorcycle helmet. But as soon as you spoke, it's like, holy shit, that's John DeLancey. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? I was young enough and inexperienced enough to think that, of course, the camera was right on me. <laughs> and that, you know, every move, every nuance was going to be covered instead of what it was, was essentially I had a, a can on the top of my head. Right. <laughs> 330 feet away. <laughs> so I could have just, you know, I could have, I could have saved myself a lot of grief. <laughs> and so uh, we're we're doing a little audio drama here, mm -hmm. and something you're not a stranger to at all. Mm. Alien voices. Alien voices, yeah. That's, uh, I love that. Yeah. That's so much fun. Yeah, I was uh, directing um, uh, the Howard Koch, um, Orson Welles. Um, um, War of the World. War of the World, right. Leonard Nimoy was in it. Mm -hmm. And at the end, I asked Leonard if he had enjoyed himself, which he did. And I said, well, I have this idea, and that is to put together a, um, an audio company which we would do classic science fiction. Right. And uh, Nat Sigaloff and I wrote the, uh, the material. And, uh, and then we started hiring kind of our friends. And we ended up, we were gangbusters for about four years. Uh, we did a lot of work for Simon & Schuster. Then we had a deal with um, Sci-Fi Channel, which um, had us doing these, these things. You know, when, when you go to Sci-Fi Channel and you say, listen, I want to do whatever, you know, Lost World or First Men in the Moon, 
and you explain to them. And they said, oh, okay, well, how, how are you going to do it? I said, well, it's a stage you know, with an audience. <laughs> and they're like, yes. And they're actors with microphones, and they have a script, and their eyes are beginning to roll up in the back <laughs> of their heads. And, uh, and we have Foley artists on stage, and we have musicians on stage, and the whole thing is, think of it as kind of a performance piece. Well, bless them, they went okay. Well, of course they went okay because they had Leonard. Uh, but they went okay, and they came to the first show. Uh, we rented the, uh, the, the theater down on the Olympic there, um, uh, in Figueroa. Uh, it had like 1,500, okay. you know, yeah. And uh, it was jammed. I mean, it was absolutely filled, and yeah. all the cameras were there, and we came out to do it. And the, uh, the suits came in, and they sat, you know, in those prime seats right in the middle of the orchestra, and they all had their, their arms folded, and they were like, oh, <laughs> what is this going to be like? But the audience went crazy. Yeah. You know, the audience enjoys using their imagination, and they enjoy uh, seeing... I, I always used to uh, pitch it that it's a clock with the face taken off the clock. The hands are still there, which is the story right but you are and you can tell the time because you know you know where on a clock the hands are and what have you but you are seeing through the face on uh, into the gears and you're seeing all the stuff that makes it up the foley artists that uh you know dropping a watermelon onto the floor or or you know you know to, to get particular sounds and and the and the musicians coming up behind the actors and playing, you know, the violin or stuff like that. So uh, it, we did uh, one, two, three, four, five of those. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's been so much fun about doing this for me. Yeah. Is that exact same kind of thing? It's the same kind of concept. Yeah, and it's yeah. very creative, and <laughs> and uh, and I think people are moving more and more towards. Uh, not making a date with a an event, but rather having the event come to them. Right. And, um, you know, this will be listened to by millions of people uh, uh, for a long, long time. Yeah. You know, in all sorts of different environments, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. That, that, we had that, especially like with Leonard Nimoy e. yeah. being gone and yeah. we still have those. It's really yeah, amazing. yeah, yeah. Uh. So, you are always going to conventions, right? Not always, but I've gone a to lot. a lot of conventions. Yeah. yeah right. is, is there is there anything you ever wanted to talk about that you never get to talk about because you always have to talk about Q? Oh <laughs> no! I mean, uh, I I have to say I've been to enough of them that I've been asked enough questions now that well, there are very few questions that I have not been asked. I guess, <laughs> so that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I figured maybe it was always it was all Q all the time. No, it it isn't all Q all the time, and and you know I I, I sort of say look I, I did nine of them, mm -hmm. you know so it and I'm delighted that it's the tomato that's stuck on the wall, <laughs> uh, but um, you know I'm not I'm not upset about it, and uh, but I'm not uh, I, I do get tired a little bit after a while just yeah. you know. It's, it's like talking about a meal that you cooked 32 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, that meal had a hell of an impact. I, I, it did. <laughs> it did. And I, I now see, which is, has a great deal to do with just getting older, I have not only, uh, uh, you know, I have grandmother, daughter, and granddaughter, right. you know, standing in front of me often saying, you know, I started out with you and this is my daughter and I turned her onto it and now my granddaughter's watching it as well. You yeah. Know, so yeah. It lingers. Yeah. In a good way though. Yeah. Do you have time to play a game? Oh, I'm terrible with games. Oh, the, well, that's perfect because it's a terrible game. Okay. Well, if it's a word game, you know, you're know, going to be cutting this part. Out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how we go. Okay. It, this is the $25 pyramid. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> and this is, uh, I give you clues, 
Uh -huh. uh, words that start with Q. Uh, okay, all right. First question. When somebody's really sick and you don't want to catch it, so you have to put them into... Quarantine. Close. You quietly smother them with a pillow so you don't contract what they've gotten. <laughs> Close. What? You kill them? Oh, yes, I, yes, yes, you kill them. I, I quietly. See. That's the oh, quietly. That's I the see, I see, I see. Okay, this is what a duck says. I, I'm supposed to answer this? Yes. Quack. He says, quit shooting at me. Hunting is not really a sport unless I have a gun, too. <laughs> I see. The, the game is, is the game is, is cool. a, a, that I am your straight man. That's, yes. There we go. Yes. That, that's right. But that's only for game. part of it. I see. Okay. Okay. This is cotton on a stick. You put it in your ears, even though the doctor says you really shouldn't. Yeah. Q-tips. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> when you're taking a, sh it's a, it's a short test. It's a quiz. No, it's a quaking in your boots. Because you woke up this morning in a strange dorm and you definitely didn't read that chapter last night. Plus, you're still really kind of wasted, but you definitely need this class to pass your prerequisites, and it's a lot of pressure. <laughs> okay. Back in the 1980s, there was a popular <coughs> book called Real Men Don't Eat... Quiche. God, that's it. Thank you. I've been trying to remember that all day. Number six. When people are being really loud and you yell, Hey, everybody, be... Quiet be Quakers, because they're pious people who don't make a lot of noise, and I think in that sense we can all endeavor to be a little more like them. <laughs> and finally, thank God, first appearing in 1987, this entity has been the gift that keeps on giving, providing us joy and entertainment for over three decades. Q. Close. It's quality television from the continued Star Trek franchise. But I'll accept your answer. <laughs> and I am it's a very narcissistic answer. Exactly. Yeah. But I'm going to give you all the points because everybody wins on Back to Yours. Perfect. So congratulations. Thank you. you. Get nothing but the. Thank you. The this is like wait, wait, don't tell me, except in a. Uh, but worse. In, 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 a, in a sound booth. Yeah. 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 Where you're locked in this room, and I'm so sorry about that. Um, but I will just say, as I was thinking about. Uh, this session and, and tonight I was thinking about I'm working with an actor who has you know spoken the words of Gene Roddenberry and Vince Gilligan and the weight of that kind of hit me and I thought that's that's pretty damn cool that tonight he's he's doing my words well and thank you they're really good words well thank way. you and yeah I appreciate you saying that I yeah. appreciate you being here and yeah. putting up with this thank you <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get you out of this hot box now okay <laughs> all right well, this is was this was fun. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad. Everybody always looks very pained and at the end they say it was fun. All right. <laughs>